Hi friends, thank you so much for being here, for joining me for today's video. My name is August and this is my booktube channel, Cozy Rosie Reads. This video is especially exciting to me because spring is almost here, the spring equinox is coming upon us, and I wanted to share some of my absolute favorite spring books. I wanted to make this video because we're all kind of coming out of winter and like, don't get me wrong, I, I love winter. I love winter so much because season is slow, things are quiet, the world gets quiet we get to stay home and get cozy and warm with a good book and a fire there is specific literature for the winter season for sure but the spring it is this feeling of like renewing rebirth getting inspired creatively but also through literature through movement through going outside through what we wear I mean <laughs> I'm feeling the spring today, friends. I am feeling it and just tending to like our own personal little gardens, right? So I chose these books specifically because at one point or another they inspired me so much. They made me feel like I was just this little blossom and after reading it I was blooming into a beautiful flower. I left reading these books feeling like I gained knowledge, I gained perspective, I gained inspiration, I felt more creative, I felt reinvigorated, I felt alive. So that is why I'm recommending these books for you all because I hope it will inspire you in the same way that we can kind of bust out of our little cocoons, transform into the beautiful butterflies that we are, tend to our own personal little gardens and tend to earth as well. If you have a little garden, this is time, plant some blooms and watch them grow. So that is my intention with this video. I want to make you feel inspired and excited to read and reading from new and different perspectives. So in this video, I have fiction recommendations and then nonfiction recommendations. So down below will be a timestamp where you can just skip ahead if you're more of a nonfiction or memoir fan, go ahead and you can do that down below. In this, we have science fiction, contemporaries, essays, memoirs, and some books that are very, very difficult to explain. And I will do my absolute best to try to explain them, but again, I feel like they're books that it's, I'm not trying to sound gatekeepy, but it's like you have to read it to understand what I mean about the writing style and about the exquisiteness of them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very, very excited to share these books with you all. Come along with me. Let's do it. Let's talk about some wonderful spring book recommendations. The first book that I want to share with you all is actually from an author that I think we all are very familiar with, but maybe it's a book that we weren't required to read in high school, okay? <laughs> and that is The Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut. This book, okay, so I think for many of us we were required to read maybe Slaughterhouse-Five or Cat's Cradle in high school. I fell in love with Slaughterhouse-Five in high school. I absolutely loved it. So when I found this book sitting and just chilling at a library book sale, I picked it up. One because, I mean, this cover. <laughs> I love this cover a lot. Um, even the spine just kind of is that pinky spring feeling. And I read this last April and absolutely loved it. I then passed it on to my partner who absolutely loved it, said it was one of his favorite books that he's read in a really, really long time. So this is a science fiction, absolutely quirky and bizarre and artistic and beautiful book that follows this young man named Malachi Constant. The beginning of this book feels so much like a futuristic sci-fi version of The Great Gatsby. He lives this ridiculously wealthy lifestyle, kind of a party playboy, really from a rich family. He's given the opportunity to travel to space. Uh, before this, he meets a man who tells him that one day he's going to marry a specific woman, he's gonna end up on Mars, and he's gonna have a son and he gives him all of these predictions and Malachi the whole time is like what are you talking about that makes no sense the world building in this is done so well where it feels so real but so bizarre and away from us at the same time I think just it's a book that I feel like you have to read to understand what I mean in terms of the world building and the science fiction element. But basically he does, he ends up on Mars, he ends up in this like army colony, he then travels to all these places, he tries to prove that this rich, ridiculous community that he's from is part of a really big problem. And then it ends in one of the most memorable, poetic, again, very almost like avant-garde way 
and it is just truly a delightful, fun, ridiculous book, but it undertones are just so full of these really strong morals that can then be taken into context into today's society. So overall, this is just such a wonderful read, especially in the springtime where I feel like our artistic senses are blooming again. We're kind of able to see inspiration or pick up things that we normally wouldn't. At least for me, that's typically how I feel is I want to step outside of that comfort zone. So I think The Sirens of Titan is a truly wonderful book to kick off the spring equinox. The next book I'd like to share with you all is one of my all-time favorite books, and that is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. Oh, this book, I have just... Oh, I have such a big place in my heart for this book because of its eccentric, quirky, whimsical, delightful writing style that Jenny Slate has. This is again another book that I feel like has to be read in order to understand the writing style that Jenny Slate has. It is so magical and filled with magical realism and pop culture and these light fluffy topics, but at the same time, there is this note of truth in them. Um, there are just so many like little delightful stories. It almost feels like a stream of consciousness, but in the most poetic, bizarre brain <laughs> that I've ever like read from or perspective. And it just has such beautiful takes on everyday ordinary things. You can tell she's a comedian. You can tell that she has a truly whimsical way of thinking where things are optimistic and light and fluffy, but she's still so aware of the downfalls and pitfalls of society. Society. I think I'll read the first little bit of this book so you understand the writing style because it is so delightful and perfect for the springtime, perfect to take on a little picnic, um, and it begins with this chapter called Treat. One of my fantasy dimensions is, strangers on the street see me and think I might be French. You are a stranger, you see me, and you think that there I am, a French woman. And then you look at me and allow a deeper kind of feeling sight to occur, and you see past the woman and you sense that I am actually a homemade Parisian croissant. And I was born in a kitchen in a house with cool stone floors and deep window sills that hold the light in the shape of a big box, window sills that are so deep that they could be a desk. I was born as a breakfast pastry in the fancy part of France, and hours after I was born I was still warm from the heat of the oven. I knew that my warmth and lovely shape were the result of thoughtful and gentle work. Oh, please feel it. I am the croissant that felt its own heat and curves and wished to become a woman, and I am that woman from the wish. Let me be your morning treat with your coffee." I mean, how can you not love that? So basically that is the tone of the whole book, is these almost ridiculous symbolisms and metaphors and analogies that are just divine, absolutely divine. This is a book that I feel like is so tantalizing with its colors and its senses and its just overall feeling. It just wraps you up in this blanket and just bedazzles you. I think that's the best word is like literally bedazzled. Just imagine a bunch of gemstones bedazzling the cover of a book and that is Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. This next book is another one of my all-time favorites. It was one of my favorites of last year, 2020, and that is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This book has been making its rounds on the booktube community for a while now, and I'm hopping on that train because it deserves all of the hype. It is such a beautiful story. It's so much more than what the back of the book describes, but basically it follows this 16-year-old girl named Nao living in Tokyo before the tsunami hits. Writing in her diary, and you're following these diary passages as she's talking about her family, about what her family is going through and cataloging her past and her history. After the tsunami hits, the journal is found washed ashore on this gorgeous little coastal town in the Pacific Northwest where an author and a writer named Ruth picks it up, and she then becomes really enamored and obsessed with Now's story and wants to track her down and make sure her and her family are safe after this tsunami. And it just catalogs her her love and her care of this person that she's never met. And it bounces between both Now and Ruth's perspectives. And then things just happen from there that are absolutely beautiful and trippy and lovely. This is just remarkable and masterful storytelling. Just in a nutshell, this is a masterful poetic book and such a wonderful one to read in the springtime. This is just a fantastic piece of literature and I highly, highly recommend it. If you've 
had a copy or you've been thinking about reading this book, this is your sign to please pick it up because it is truly fantastic. The next book I'd like to recommend to you is another book that I read last spring and absolutely loved, and that is Freshwater by Akwekwe Amezi. This book is so beautiful. It's so poetic. It follows this young Nigerian woman named Ada, and it describes how at a young age, her cells begin to split. Whether this is a metaphor for having DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely feels like that. There's this other half of her that's more outgoing, that's more reckless, and almost endangers Ada's body. It is this fascinating story that interweaves throughout it Nigerian folklore, and it is just so beautifully done, so poetic, so gorgeous, and I just, highly highly recommend this book considering that it's a debut novel as well i mean fantastic it's so beautiful this book does include some trigger warnings so please be cautious going into it but it just catalogs ada's life as she grows from a young child almost feeling like she had a different part of herself that's separate from who she truly was her real emotions and her personality but this other part tends to take over her body and just has full autonomy of her physical self and as she kind of grows up it catalogs her relationships her partnerships her friendships and her academic school as she goes into college for the first time. What's interesting about this book as well is that the different personalities of Ada become narrators and they become a really big part of the story and the more that she ages, the more that her true self is being pushed to the background as they fight to take over her body and make decisions for her. Overall, it's just truly a wonderful story. It's so beautifully written and a really wonderful one, I think, for the springtime. Not sure why, but it just emanates that spring feeling to me. Maybe it's because I read it in the springtime, but like, it was a mood. It was a vibe. I highly recommend this book. This author is absolutely fantastic. And the final piece of fiction that I would like to recommend to you all is Followers by Megan Angelo. This is a book that is definitely more contemporary, more modern, but it still has a very interesting sci-fi twist that deals a lot with the powers of influencers and social media, which I thought was a really, really fascinating subject. This book follows a young woman named Orla who wants to be a novelist, but is stuck working in writing kind of clickbait articles that follow celebrities and influencers. And then one day she meets this other woman named Floss and together they kind of come up with these schemes to get a lot of followers on social media and become influencers really, really quickly. Orla's timeline in this book takes place in 2015. Each chapter then bounces from Orla's perspective to a young woman named Marlo who's living in 2051 and she is living in this complete, almost like a Truman Show bubble where as an influencer she is watched all the time. She is on live feeds where she then has to wear what sponsors send her, eat what sponsors send her, and live this life that is completely open to the public view through social media and smartphones. It is such an eerie depiction of what celebrities and influencers can look like in the future, which I found so gripping, so truly terrifying, but so well done because there is such a really beautiful novel and narrative throughout this story as we're following these characters and trying to figure out how they're eventually going to link from 2015 to the year 2051. It catalogs this relationship between female friends and what society puts on women and what society deems as being a celebrity how can we easily become a celebrity nowadays? Like it's a real thing that you can overnight become an influencer and be in the public eye. So I thought this was a really delightful book. I liked the atmosphere so much and especially with the science fiction kind of twists of this modern future where the world is so terrifying but it feels really realistic especially in terms of where we're going in society now so that is followers by megan angelo now onto some truly wonderful non-fiction recommendations that i am so excited to share with you all the first book is redefining realness by janet mock this is a truly beautifully written memoir that follows janet mock's life as a trans woman growing up in honolulu coming to terms with her gender and her identity going into 
prostitution, living a life that was without parental guidance, without acceptance, facing discrimination, facing relationships, and also doing some self-medication in order to become the woman that she always knew she was. This is just a truly beautifully written story of this one woman's life that is just so beautifully detailed and chronicled through her writing. Her writing style is so accessible and easy to understand and you're immediately put into these situations where it doesn't feel safe and you can really relate to the emotions that she's feeling. She shares and chronicles all of the really unique challenges and struggles and experiences that she faced as being a trans woman and wanting to hold her identity for herself and keep it secret from everybody else in her life. And then it talks about how she was able to then travel to New York City and get a degree and study and educate and motivate and start her career and then eventually find a happy, healthy relationship. Overall, this book is just absolutely fantastic. Her storytelling is impeccable and the story is just incredibly inspiring, which is why I wanted to include it, especially in the spring recommendations. There's something about it that just felt so incredibly inspiring and just motivated me to be a better person, to learn more, to continue to improve, and just really listen to people's stories. We all have such important stories to tell and some have definitely been more harrowing than others. So that is Redefining Realness by Janet Mock. Now, if you are in the spring mood and you want something to just entertain you and make you laugh out loud, there is no better book in my mind than I Was Told There'd Be Cake by Sloane Crosley, or basically any book by Sloane Crosley. <laughs> she is an absolutely fantastic humor comedy writer where each sentence is so masterfully crafted to have the most humor pulled out of them. I don't know how better way to describe it other than the way that she writes. You can see that she has such a full awareness of quirky situations. These are just true stories of quirky and weird and bizarre situations that Sloane has found herself in. I remember when I picked this book up, it has such a strong meaning to me because this is a book that got me back into reading after being incredibly depressed, being away from reading for so long. I actually found it in an orange crate at the side of the road when I was living in Toronto and I remember just digging through it, picking it up and devouring it all in one night, laughing to myself in my kitchen and I just couldn't put it down. She talks about the childhood fascination and obsession with the game Oregon Trail, which a lot of us 90s kids and 2000s kids can definitely relate to, and it follows just being an adult, being a part of weddings, and all of these quirky, weird life situations that happen to all of us, but she does it in a way where it is just so humorous, so relatable, and just so well done. I would definitely compare Sloane Crossley's writing to that of David Sedaris, where you are laughing along, you're feeling so confused as to how these people get into these situations in the first place and just being utterly perplexed at what people do and how real people interact with each other and the weird things that us as humans do. I think overall it's just a fascinating book that follows real ordinary things but how bizarre they really are. So that is I Was Told There'd Be Cake, Essays by Sloane Crossley. This next book that I want to share is another incredibly powerful memoir where the story just feels so much like the saying, truth is stranger than fiction, and that is Leaving Mother Lake, A Girlhood at the Edge of the World by Yang Erche Namu, um, and translated and worked on with Christine Matthew. This is a story that follows this young girl named Namu as she lives in a matriarchal society in the Himalayan mountains. Yes, there is a matriarchal society that lives in the Himalayan mountains. It catalogs her growing up and what it's like to live in a matriarchal society. It talks about the familial relationships and the small community that is very remote from the rest of the world. It then catalogs Namu's incredible and strange and how in the world does this happen experience as these talent agencies and scouts came to this Himalayan mountainside town and they scouted Namu for a national singing competition in I believe it is Hong Kong and from there she is introduced to the world basically. It is such a big culture shock for her to be in a giant massive city like Hong Kong where she then is put on stage to perform in this national singing competition. It just talks about her experiences of grappling with this culture shock, of being around so many people from all different 
cultures and being so far removed from the tiny little village that she lived in. This is just an incredible story, one that I feel like I just feel lucky to have read from, you know what I mean? Where where you read it and you're just like, oh my gosh, like how is this, how is this real? How did this happen? How did I not know of this person? Because she ended up not really becoming a big celebrity, but it's, I'm just glad that this book is here so we can all read from it and know and understand a little bit more of the Chinese culture. This is just an incredible story, so fascinating, so well written, and just truly, truly eye-opening. So I highly recommend this one, especially for the springtime. So that is Leaving Mother Lake. The last book I want to recommend for you all is The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. Oh, this book! If you have the opportunity to listen to this on audiobook, I highly, highly recommend it because it is read by the author and you just feel this emotional, ooh, it's, it's so sad, it's so beautiful. This book basically follows Sai's love and how she fell into this love and obsession and passion over octopuses at her local aquarium. She had the opportunity to go and visit and she became really intrigued with the octopus and decided to study them. And through that, she was able to make real connections with this octopus that she then gained this friendship they had this trust, they had this such a fascinating relationship with each other and it talks about how the octopus has a soul. It's able to understand emotional longing and connection and it wants connection, it wants physical touch. And it dives into the science, the biology, the anatomy of octopus. It gives such a big context as to the like very alien-like creature that is so much more than it appears. It has such an emotional range. And it goes through the hardships and the difficulties of being connected to a wild animal um, things happen that are very difficult. Uh, it talks a lot about loss and grief and mourning and our connection with the natural world. It is just such a beautiful, 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 beautiful book. How many times can I say the word beautiful in this video? <laughs> but it is. It's such a beautiful and inspirational and emotional story and it's so incredibly moving. I think Cy Montgomery did such a wonderful job of incorporating emotional storytelling with very fascinating scientific facts to back it up and overall it was just such an interesting exploration into these creatures as well as human emotions. So there you have it my friends. Those are my spring equinox book recommendations for you all. I would love to hear if any of these piqued your interest, if you've read any of them before, if you have any books that you recommend for the springtime specifically. I would absolutely love to hear what you're planning on reading this spring and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful spring season. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!